to move an object at a specified distance in a specified direction. The shortcut key used to type in the command line is M. Let's see how to move an object. Here are the steps. Draw a rectangle in a drawing area using the rectangle command. Now go to the Modify menu and select the Move command. The command line asks you to select objects to move. Select an object and press Enter. Note that you can select one or more objects to move. Now the command line asks you to specify a base point. Specify a base point on the drawing area. Now the command line asks you to specify a second point to place an object. Specify a second point on the drawing area. Note that the two points you specify define a vector. This indicates how far the selected objects are to be moved and in what direction they should be moved. In a move command, there is one more option available. This is called displacement. Let's see how to use the displacement option. Draw a rectangle in a drawing area using the rectangle command. Go to the Modify menu and select the Move command. Now the command line asks you to select objects to move. Select an object and press Enter. Type D on the command line and press Enter to select the displacement or simply press Enter. Now the command line asks you to specify displacement. Type a coordinate value. For example, type 10, 10 and press Enter. Note that the value is calculated from the lower left corner point of a rectangle, and thus the object is moved. Copy It copies an object at a specified distance in a specified direction. It creates a duplicate object from the original or source object. The shortcut key used to type in the command line is CO. Let's see how to create a copy of an object. Draw a rectangle using a rectangle command in a drawing area. Drag the mouse to Menu Browser and click the down arrow and in the Modify menu we can select the Copy command. In AutoCAD 2009 there is a simple method to select the Copy command. Go to Modify tab and select Copy icon. Now the command line asks you to select objects. Select an object the one which needs to copy, and press Enter. Note that you can select one or more objects to copy. Now the command line asks us to specify a base point. Displacement mode, multiple. Let's specify a base point on the drawing area. Thus the object is created and the command gets executed. Let's see the second option, displacement, in the copy command. Go to Modify tab and select Copy icon. Now the command line asks you to select objects. Select an object, the one which you need to copy and press Enter. Note that you can select one or more objects to copy. Now the command line asks us to specify a base point. Displacement mode multiple. Now type D on the command line and press Enter to select Displacement option. Now the command line asks you to specify displacement. Type a coordinate value. For example, type 6, 6 and press Enter. Note that the value is calculated from the lower left corner point of a rectangle. Thus the object is copied and executed from the copy command. Let's see the third option in copy command, which is called Mode. This option is newly added in this version. The mode option controls whether the copy command repeats automatically to create many duplicate objects. There are two sub-options in mode option. They are single, it helps to create a single duplicate copy of objects and exits the command, multiple, it helps to create many duplicates copies of objects. Mirror. Mirroring is useful for creating symmetrical objects because you can quickly draw half the object and then mirror it instead of drawing the entire object. The shortcut key used to type on the command line is MI. Draw a sketch on the drawing area, the one you wish to mirror. 
Go to Modify Menu and select the Mirror option. Now the command line asks you to select an object to mirror. Select the object and press Enter. Now specify a first point of mirror line on the drawing area. Then specify a second point of mirror line on the drawing area. Now the command line asks whether you need to erase the source objects. If you do need to erase, type yes. If you want to keep the source object, type no. Let's type no and press enter. Thus the source and destination mirror object are displayed. Note that according to the selection of the two points, the mirror line may be horizontal, or vertical, or in an inclined position. Scale Scale proportionately resizes the selected objects about a base point. Specify a numeric scale factor, or use reference geometry to specify the new size. Simply, it enlarges or reduces selected objects proportionally in the X, Y, and Z directions. The shortcut key used to type on the command line is SC. Draw a rectangle on the drawing area of length as 10 and breadth as 8. Go to the Modify menu and select a Scale option. Now the command line asks you to select an object. Select the rectangle and press Enter. Now specify a base point on the drawing area. Specify the scale factor as 2 and press Enter. Note that the default scale factor is always 1. If the scale factor value is above 1, the size is increased. If the scale factor is below 1, the size is decreased. There are sub-options available in the scale command. They are Copy and Reference. Let's see how to use the Copy option on a scale command. Copy. To create a duplicate copy without any changes in the original or source object, draw a rectangle on the drawing area, 10 in length and 8 in breadth. Go to the Modify menu and select a Scale option. Now the command line asks you to select an object. Select the rectangle and press Enter. Now specify a base point on the drawing area. Type C on the command line and press Enter to create duplicate copies. Specify a scale factor as 0 0.5 and press Enter. Thus the duplicate copy is created with the scale factor. Let's see how to use the Reference option on a scale command. Reference. This option scales the selected objects based on a reference length and specifies a new length. Draw a rectangle on the drawing area, 10 in length and 8 in breadth. Go to the Modify menu and select a Scale option. Now the command line asks you to select an object, so select the rectangle and press Enter. Now specify a base point on the drawing area. To use the Reference option, type R for Reference Selection and press Enter in the Scale command. Now the command line asks you to specify a reference length. Specify the value as 2 and press Enter. Now specify the new length as 1 and press Enter. The size is decreased now. Thus the new object is created. Rotate. Rotate option spins objects around a base point, either rotating the original or making a copy and leaving the original in place. Specify the amount of rotation by entering an angle or using reference geometry. It revolves around a base point. The shortcut key used to type in the command line is RO. Draw a rectangle on the drawing area. Go to the Modify menu and select the Rotate option. Select an object and then press Enter. Now the command asks you to specify a base point, so specify a base point. And specify how much angle to rotate. For example, type 45 and press Enter. Thus the object gets rotated 45 degrees. There are some more options available in the Rotate command. They are Copy 
and Reference. Let's see how to rotate an object using a copy option in the rotate command. Copy. Copy option is used to create a duplicate object without altering the position of the source object. Draw a rectangle on the drawing area. Go to the Modify menu and select the Rotate option. Select the object and press Enter. Now the command asks you to specify a base point. So specify a base point. Type C on the command line to select the copy option and press enter. Now type the value as 40 degrees for rotation angle and press enter. Thus the duplicate object is created with the rotation angle. Let's see the reference option in rotate command. Reference. Reference is used to rotate objects from a specified angle to a new and absolute angle. For example, draw a rectangle on the drawing area. Go to the Modify menu and select the Rotate option. Now select the rectangle, which is tilted to some angle, and the tilted angle is unknown. Now press Enter. The command asks you to specify a base point. So specify a base point. Now select the reference by typing R on the command line and pressing Enter. The command line asks you to specify a reference angle. Select an inclined line, first corner point, and select a second corner point. Now specify how much of an angle you need to tilt this. For example, type 180 and press Enter. Thus the rectangle is rotated to 180 degrees by calculating the angle from 0 degrees in counterclockwise direction. Fillet Here we are going to discuss about fillet. Let me tell you what the definition of fillet is. A fillet is defined as an arc which connects two objects tangentially with a specified radius. Normally, fillet is used to form a round shape in some sharp corners. The shortcut key used to type on the command line is F. Let us see how to create a fillet in an object. Draw a rectangle on the drawing area by using Rectangle command. Drag the mouse to Menu Browser and click the down arrow key and it drops down the menu. Now select the Modify menu and you can select the fillet command. This method is similar to previous versions of AutoCAD. Now in AutoCAD 2009, these steps are simplified and it is displayed as an icon. Drag the mouse to Modify tab and select the fillet icon. Now the command line asks you to select the first object or Undo, Polyline, Radius, Trim and Multiple. First, let us see about the Radius option in fillet command. Type R on the command line to specify the radius of fillet and press Enter. Now the command line asks you to specify the fillet radius. Specify the radius. For example, type uh, 1 and then press Enter. Again, it asks you to select the first object. Now select a line in the rectangle. Now the command line asks you to select a second object or Shift Select to apply corner. Select another line to apply a fillet to the corner edges. Thus the fillet is created in the corner of the rectangle. Let us discuss the next option which is called multiple in the fillet command. Multiple. It is used to create many fillets in the sketch in a single command continuously. Go to modify tab and select the fillet icon. Now the command line asks you to select the first object or undo, polyline, radius, trim and multiple. Type M in the command line for multiple options and press enter. Now select the sketch to apply a fillet continuously. To reject the process of fillet of a last object, type U on the command line and press enter. U is the shortcut key for undo. This is used to reject the process of fillet. Finally, press Enter to come out from the command. Let us discuss the next option, which is Polyline in the fillet command. 
polyline. It is used to create a fillet in all corners of a sketch of a polyline object, like rectangle, triangle and hexagon entities. Polyline is a multiple line in a single profile which is manipulated as a single object. Go to Modify tab and select the fillet icon. Now the command line asks you to select the first object or Undo, Polyline, Radius, Trim and Multiple. Type P in the command line for Polyline option and press Enter. Now the command line asks you to select a 2D polyline. So select the sketch on the drawing area. Thus the fillet is created. Let's discuss the next option on the fillet command which is Trim. Trim. This is used to create a fillet by trimming the extended portion of a selected sketch. Create a sketch on the drawing area. The entities should be intersected. Go to Modify tab and select Fillet icon. Now the command line asks you to select the first object or Undo, Polyline, Radius, Trim and Multiple. Type T in the command line for Trim option and press Enter. Now the command line asks you to enter a trim mode option. Note: Trim options trim the extended sketch and create a fillet. No trim creates a fillet without trimming the sketch. So type T to select the trim option and press enter. Now select the first object and the second object. Thus the trim of an object occurs with a fillet between them. Trim. The Trim command allows you to cut the objects by selecting other objects that cross them. This means you can first create an object such as a line and then later adjust it to fit exactly between other objects. There is not much difference between the previous versions of AutoCAD when compared with AutoCAD 2009, whereas the Trim icon is displayed to reduce the time and for flexibility. The shortcut key used to type on the command line is TR. Drag the mouse to the menu browser and click the down arrow key. From the drop down list select the modify menu and it displays the trim option. This step is then followed in previous versions of AutoCAD, whereas in AutoCAD 2009 the trim icon is created to reduce the time and for easy accessibility. Let's see how to use that trim icon. Go to the Modify tab and select Trim command. Now the command line asks you to select an object to specify a boundary. Select the line to specify a boundary. Within that boundary the removal of entities takes place. Now press Enter. There are many sub-options available to trim an object. They are Fence, Crossing, Project, Edge, Arrays and Undo. Let's see the Fence option here. Fence is a multi-segmented line specified to select objects where it passes through. For example, type F on the command line and press Enter. Select a first point on the drawing area and specify a second point with some distance from the first point and between these two points. The entities to be trimmed should be touching it. Now press Enter. The entities which were touching have got trimmed now. Let's see the crossing option. Crossing. A crossing window is specified to select many entities. Type C on the command line under trim command and press enter. Select an object by crossing window. The entities have got trimmed. Let's see the erase option in trim command. Erase. It erases the source object without trimming. For example, type R and press Enter. Now select the lines that need to be erased and press Enter. These entities are erased. Let's see the Undo option in Trim command. Undo. This is used to reject the process of trim. Type U on the command line and press Enter. Thus the Erase option is rejected. In the drawing area, press Enter to come out from the command. Thus, the object gets trimmed. Let's see the Edge option in Trim command. Edge. 
It has two options. Extend allows the line to trim in an imaginary fashion by extending the line to get intersected. The no extend option does not allow the line to extend with an imaginary fashion. For example, draw two lines perpendicular to each other and they shouldn't touch each other. Go to Modify tab and select a trim icon. Press Enter to avoid the specifications of boundary. Type E on the command line and press Enter. Select Extend option by typing E and pressing Enter. Now select the line which needs to be trimmed and press Enter. The entity gets trimmed. No Extend option does not allow the line to extend imaginarily and trimming the object. Let's see some other options in Trim Command which are more familiar. Project. It specifies the projection method used when trimming objects. There are some sub-options available in this option. They are... None. It specifies any projection. The command only trims objects that intersect with the cutting edge in a 3D space when trimming objects. UCS. It specifies projection onto the XY plane of the current UCS. The command trims objects that do not intersect with the cutting edge in 3D space. View. It specifies projection along the current view direction. The command trims objects that intersect the boundary in the current view. We don't need to discuss this option in detail because it is applicable in the 3D window. Draw order. This is a new command in the AutoCAD 2009 version. Generally, overlapping objects such as text, wide polylines and solid fill polygons are displayed in the order they are created. Newly created objects in front of existing objects. By using Draw Order option, we can change the Draw Order, which is the display and plotting order of any objects. It helps you to control which overlapping objects appear to be on top. This command is similar to Draw Order option used in MS Excel software. Let's see how to use this command. It has four options. They are Bring to Front Send to Back Bring Above Objects Send Under Objects Let's have a look at the first option, which is the Bring to Front option. This option helps to move the selected objects to the top of the order of objects in the drawing. Let's create a sketch on the drawing area. Now go to Home tab and click on the Modify panel. Now select the Bring to Front option. Now the command line asks you to select objects. Select the first sketch, which is drawn first and overlapped by other objects. Now press Enter. Thus the object has been brought to the front. Let's see the second option, which is Send to Back option. This option helps to move the selected objects to the bottom of the order of objects in the drawing. Let's create a sketch on the drawing area. Now select the Send to Back option. Now the command line asks you to select objects. Select the last sketch, which is Draw Last and Over on the other objects. Now press Enter. Thus the object is sent to the back. Let's see the third option, which is Bringing Above Objects. This option helps to move the selected objects above the specified reference objects. Let's create a sketch on the drawing area and select the Bring in Above Objects option. Now the command line asks to select objects. Select the first object, which is drawn and overlapped by other objects, and press Enter. Now the command line asks to select the reference objects. Thus, select the required object on which the selected object is to be placed over and press Enter. Thus, the object has been brought above the referenced object. Now the last option to have a look at is Send Under Objects. This option helps to move the selected objects below the specified reference objects. 
let's create a sketch on the drawing area. Now select the Sending Under Objects option. Now the command line asks to select objects. Select the last object, which is drawn and needs to be sent under the other objects, and press Enter. Now the command line asks to select the reference objects. Thus, select the required object, on which the selected object is to be placed under and then press Enter. Thus, the object has been sent under the referenced object. Now, the command has been completed. More cool dimension features. In AutoCAD 2009, there are some new dimension commands that are added and are very flexible to use. Let's see those commands. Dimension Linear. The shortcut key used in command line is DLI. Linear dimensions are the most commonly used dimensions. They are used to measure the length of an object or distance between the two points in a drawing window. Use linear dimensions to dimension straight segments, such as lines or polylines, the chord length of an arc, or the diameter of a circle, which can be created horizontally, vertically, or rotated. Let's see how to specify a dimension for a linear object. Go to the Dimension panel. Now select the Linear button. Now the command line asks you to specify the first extension line origin. Select the first point on the drawing area. Now the command line asks to specify a second extension line origin. Select the second point on the drawing area. Now drag the cursor and place it on the dimension line. You can select the line by just pressing Enter when you are in Dimension Linear command. Select an object to specify a dimension. Thus, the other options in Dimension Linear are the same as per the previous versions of AutoCAD. Let's see the second option as Dimension Break command. Dimension Break. It is used to break the extension line when it crosses an object. This will help us draw without overlapping. The shortcut key used to type on the command line is dim break. Let us see how to break the dimension using dim break. Create a rectangle and a line on the drawing area and place a dimension of it using dimension linear option. Go to the dimension panel. Now select the dimension break button. Select dimension to add and remove break or multiple. Note that the multiple options allow you to select many dimensions. Now, select the dimension on the drawing area. Select the object to break dimension or Auto Manual Remove. Auto. Let us select the object which is crossed by the dimension. Again, the command line asks to ob select the object to break dimension. Now press Enter to finish the break on the dimension line. Thus, the break in a dimension is created. Let us discuss about some sub-options in the Dimension Break command. Auto. This option is similar to previous versions of AutoCAD. It is used to create a break on the dimension line automatically through the objects which are crossed by the dimension. Let us create a sketch on the drawing area and place the dimensions of it. Go to the Dimension panel. Now select the Dimension Break button. The command line asks you to select the dimension. Select the dimension and type A on the command line and press Enter. The dimension is created with the break automatically. The next option is Remove. This option is similar to restoring the option in a break command of previous versions of AutoCAD. It is used to remove the dimension without a break in it. Go to the Dimension panel. Now select the Dimension Break button. Now the command line asks you to select the dimension. Select the dimension which has a break in it and type R on the command line to select Restore option and press Enter. The dimension is restored without a break in it. The next option is Manual. This option is similar to the previous versions of AutoCAD. 
It is used to create the break in a dimension according to the selection of two points. Go to the Dimension panel. Now select the Dimension Break button. Now the command line asks you to select the dimension. Select a dimension on the drawing area. Now type M on the command line and press Enter to select Manual option. The command line asks you to specify a first breakpoint. Specify the first breakpoint on the drawing area. Now the command line asks you to specify a second breakpoint. Specify the second breakpoint. Now the break on the command line has been created. These are all of the sub-options that are useful to create a break on the dimension.